I'm here with Nate of Oculus VR. Nate, how's it going? I'm doing well. Great. So we just had a chance to play uh, Super Hot, Lucky's Tale, and Alien Isolation on the new Dev Kit 2. Uh, you guys are focusing on showing us more content here at E3 this year, right? Yep, absolutely. So the big focus for us, you know, coming off of GDC where we announced the second development kit, is really been on, aside from the hardware and hiring, content and really delivering as much high quality, like made for VR content as possible. So we're investing heavily on the publishing side, which you know, Lucky's Tale we just announced last week, we're publishing uh, with the Playful team who's developing that. And alongside all of that, we, you know, we just announced um, Tuesday morning, Jason Rubin has joined at Head of Worldwide Studio, so he'll be heading up a lot of our first party uh, development. So we're investing heavily in content across the board. We think it's really one of the key challenges that's still sort of gating the uh, consumer launch. Can you give us a sense of what you want the, the sort of ideal development team size in terms of software you know, internally at Oculus? That is a tough question. So on core tech, I mean, the team today is somewhere around 125 people full time. It depends on how you count contractors in different locations. We are spread across a few different studios in Seattle, Irvine, and Dallas. Um, a good portion of the team right now is software, really focused on core tech, enabling other developers to create stuff. I think jury's still out on how big the studio should be. We do have a number of little initiatives internally, whether it's apps or experiments or even mini games that we have been developing. But what Jason's really going to be focused on is taking those teams to the next level and building out you know, a robust team that can actually deliver sort of at the quality level that you would expect from someone like a Naughty Dog, which, you know, Ruben was one of the co-founders of that team. So uh, how big should those teams be? I'm not sure. We'll probably start small, do a lot of prototyping, iteration, experimentation, where we're hiring the best and brightest out there if you want to you know, take part in that. And then we'll grow from there and see you know, how big we need to be. And yeah, you guys have made some big prominent hires, people from Valve, of course, Michael Abrash recently, um, Jason Holtman, yes. uh, who's heading up Steam there for so many years. So, I mean, what do you guys look for in terms of you know, what's the right personality type or skill set in someone coming to Oculus VR? I'm guessing it's not just anybody, right? That's a great question. So when we look for people, we do, culture fit is a big thing for us. Um, it's not always about a passion for VR, although that usually aligns a lot of us. You know, our mission at Oculus is really to deliver the best consumer VR platform for games, hands down. So people get excited about different aspects of that, whether it's building like the best VR SDK or doing the low level, you know, graphics optimizations there, or potentially like in Holtman's case, building, you know, an incredible platform for both developers and gamers, you know, so that they have everything they need to have an awesome experience. What do we look for in particular? Really, it's about um, being really easy to work with and being incredibly bright. And those two things, I mean, there's a long list of like probably Oculus culture traits, which I think the team has sort of developed and it's really the people that have come together have defined that. But uh, we've built a, a team that we're really, really proud of that's a really easy to work with. And when you sit down at you know, a table with some of these people like Abrash and Carmack and um, the new Jasons and Brendan and Michael, and it's, it's a really fun thing to be a part of. You guys have any plans for encouraging experimentation and like more independent development? Because I mean, one of the one of the challenges I think for an independent developer, there's there's already some great stuff out there for Oculus, but you know they don't necessarily have the you guys don't have the install base yet, you know, for them to make a make a return on necessarily. So they might have to release for PC first and then for Oculus later. But you know, native is probably your goal in a lot of ways. So how do you, how do you guys stimulate that development? So I think the to be honest with you, the biggest key stimulant is taking some of the risk off the developer in the form of funding. And that's what, you know, David Martini and Steve Arnold, who recently came on board, and Aaron Davies and Callum, these guys have all been focused on building out a great publishing division and initiative to take a lot of the risk off of developers who are interested in building made-for-VR experiences for the Oculus platform. So we're betting bigger and bigger, especially with the Facebook partnership. We're able to put way more money behind the publishing arm. So you're going to see us, we actually have a number of deals that we haven't announced yet. We have a lot of deals in the pipeline right now. So there's a lot of developers who are interested. It's at the end of the day, it generally comes down to money and you know how much risk can these guys take on. But you know, if you're a developer and you're out there and you want to bet big on VR, we're ready to bet big with you. Um, we're big believers that it's going to pay off. So there's a lot of finally there's a lot of speculation about you know Oculus Oculus's value as an entertainment platform, a broader sort of you know I might be able to spectate concerts in the future if I'm you know being very blue sky about the technology's implementation. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, can you sort of reassure us at the same time that, 
I mean, do you see gaming as really the, the central part of Oculus for the foreseeable future? Absolutely. I think if you look at the team that we have in place, we're all games industry people, you know, through and through. And if you look at like Jason Rubin and Jason Holtman and, and Michael Abrash and John Carmack, I mean, these are people who have been uh, almost luminaries in the industry and, and define these key moments that have sort of transformed gaming. And we really feel like this is another one where it is this opportunity to not only, you know, complement the great like gaming industry that we love with an entirely new medium, but also put a dent in the universe like you're saying with like the possibilities around communication. Education is something I'm really excited about. Um, you talked about like concerts, like virtual tourism, you know, going to see like a Roman Coliseum in VR will be a big thing one day down the road. Right now, we're all gamers. We're like, you know, games industry guys. We really want to uh, to nail the gaming side of things and, and we're just really excited about what the development community is going to do with uh, the new hardware and software. Well, thanks for showing to us and thanks for talking to me. My pleasure. Thanks for coming.